Welcome into Locked On Knicks. The Knicks won 118 to 109 over Boston in Boston. Huge win that could have been huger, except for the fact that the Knicks were up by 30 going into the fourth quarter and were able to pull all their starters. Jalen Brunson, 39 points in three quarters. He finally gets his flowers on national TV. We're getting into that and more next on Locked On Knicks. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right. Welcome into Locked On Knicks. And I want to thank you for making Locked On Knicks your first listen today and every day, whether you're checking us out on your favorite podcast platform or taking in the sights and sounds on YouTube. We appreciate you making us a part of your daily routine. Make sure you hit that auto download function on your favorite podcast app or the notification bell on YouTube so you never miss an episode because we are here for you guys five days a week and for every huge awesome Knicks win I'm Alex Wolf I'm editor-in-chief of Knicks site the Strickland that you can find at strict.land and he's Gavin Shaw your favorite play-by-play broadcaster favorite play-by-play broadcaster and your favorite point guard's favorite point guard it's starting to feel that way Gavin um Jalen Brunson finally starting to get that national attention I guess all you have to do is score 35 in what is it five straight games now uh and almost 40 in three straight games that's all you got to do to start getting that national recognition and getting that love across the NBA finally. Uh, but Jalen Brunson, man, heck of a game in this one. 39 points, uh, shoots 15 of 23 overall from the floor, 6 of 11 from three. This dude is cooking going into the postseason. He gets the whole fourth quarter off, which was sick. Uh, this was just a fantastic showing for him, Gavin, and latest in a long line. And I, I'm I'm starting to get real excited about the postseason now, considering the the easy last two games the Knicks have coming up and the potential for a two or three seed and a home playoff series for the Knicks on not the Celtic side of the bracket, though I'm much less scared of them after this game. All right. So let's let's set the stage a little bit, right? Because we 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 did um uh last night's show um on basically the Knicks shot at the three seed and we were saying, all right, what, what, what the odds makers aren't taking into account is the Celtics are going to sit everyone in this game. And Joe Missoula was like, psych, I'm playing everyone. Uh, F those Knicks. And then Jalen Brunson came out and said, all right, F your Celtics and just lit them on fire. And I mean, just, just from a big picture perspective, I couldn't help, but watch that third quarter, Alex, and, and just kind of think to myself, like, all right, it's, it's been less than two full years. And he's already cemented himself in my mind as as the best Nick I've ever watched. Granted, I'm I'm pretty young. I was born in 1995. I became a fan of the Knicks in 2003 when I got this this cool um, like almanac basically on the on the 0203 team and previewing the 0304 team. Shout out to Basketball City Camp. Michael Sweetney was like I was like that guy's cool. He's he's a big dude. Um, but anyways, in those Little in those 21 you know? years. What'd you say? <laughs> I said Michael Sweetney. Little did you know, pal. Yeah, yeah. Little did I know. Um, yeah. Um, go down is one of the most notorious Knicks. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was cool at the time. Um, but anyways, in those 21 years, if that if that if that was the starting point, that was a good indicator. Like, mostly been pretty bad. Um, Jalen Brunson in less than two years is is on another level than any Nick I've ever seen in my life. Like, he's done more for me in two years than Melo did in like seven, which is. Is crazy to say, but and and, and Mello during 12 13 was extraordinary. Like, I don't I don't want to crap on that season. That was an amazing year. Even even in the playoffs, like he wasn't like the rest of the team let us down. He didn't let us down. So I don't this isn't to crap on Mello. It is just to say I have not seen a Nick hit this level. And yeah. this was on national TV against a team that's won what 15 more games than any other team in the Eastern Conference. And we can, and we'll talk about this. Like we can say all we want, like, all right, they weren't really trying. Like they didn't give a crap that the one seed locked up at a certain point in the third quarter, they were getting embarrassed and you could see them start to get a little pissed. And Jalen Brown said, all right, I'm going to start picking up Jalen Brunson full court. Jason Tatum said, Hey, let me help you. Let me, let me double him. Let, let's do this together. Six, eight, six, six. What is he going to do? Drew holiday. If you listen to players who go on other players' podcasts and, and they ask, all right, all right, like be honest with me. Like, who's actually the best defender in the league? Screw this Rudy Go Bear crap. They will all say to a man, Drew Holiday, like you don't you don't want that smoke. Jalen Brunson wanted that smoke tonight. And he he like one by one by one eviscerated those guys. Like they were they were playing for pride. 
They were playing to send a message like, hey, this was cute. You have your fun now. When we see you in the playoffs, you're about to get locked up. Um, and in the third quarter, like until like the very tail end of it where some other guys got going a little bit, like it was it was literally just Jalen Brunson. And like he was like taking that full court pressure, like still getting right to the rim, getting a runner. Then Holiday tried it on him. Brunson got another runner. Then a 26-footer around his screen to have 36 points before the start of the fourth. Then a give and go with Deuce, where he just like sprinted right by Drew Holiday for a bank shot. Alex, I'm I'm gonna let you talk about it, but I wanted to just throw up this tweet from our buddy DJ at DJ Ace NBA. Jalen Brunson has seen the entire span of possible coverages over the past several months and has smoked all of them. There was another quote from the Celtics athletic beat writer, Jared Weiss. The Celtics just kind of doubled Jalen Brunson. Cannot remember the last time they blitzed or doubled anyone on the perimeter like that. It was a garbage double, but it did happen. That went on to happen a bunch more times. Boston doesn't do this. They have a defense that is built around never needing to double, especially a guard. And yet Jalen Brunson forced them to do it. And he made them look stupid when they did. Yeah. I, the, that's just the Jalen Brunson experience at this point. I mean, he was so slithery. Uh, it just, the, the smarts that he has too to get out of those situations, like the Knicks now too. I mean, it, it's good on them. Good on Tibbs for keeping these guys prepared and, you, you know, knowing what to do in those situations. Cause they're really good about like if they send heavy backcourt pressure, it's like just get the ball out of Brunson's hands for just a second, you know, get across the timeline, get settled, get it back in his hands and then make them double him again. But then do it, you know, not in a not in a place where it could potentially harm him quite as as much, you know, as in the backcourt where things can get dicey really fast. And, you know, we saw that even lead to some cases where, you know, they were doubling so hard in the backcourt that Brunson got rid of it quick enough that they were able to just straight up attack a tilted defense while there were two guys still stranded in the backcourt with Jalen Brunson once or twice. And, you know, he made them think twice about that. It's just crazy how, how well he's able to see the floor and navigate defenses like that, given his height. Like he's from what I understand, I've never stood next to the guy I've, I've had, <laughs> unfortunately I've now kind of reached a point where the, the brief time where I got to stand next to a bunch of Knicks, there's not that many of those guys left on on the team anymore um so I, I don't have too many more frames of reference anymore but you know from what you see and read people are like I thought, he's I you're gonna tell me mr robinson's two. actually six two <laughs> no mr robinson is every bit of seven foot plus trust Good me he's a right, huge so that's, that's, that scale for you you should be able to get jalen brunson from there yeah exactly i mean i but with brunson like you know you always hear that he's like maybe six two which is what he's listed at but like probably not and it just amazes me. It's like, it's like when you had like, uh, I, I love a good NFL uh, NBA crossover. It's like, it reminds me of how like Drew Brees used to always get crap for being like a short QB. And yet it never made a difference. Like they were always like, how, how is a quarterback that small going to be able to see over the offensive line? They're all like six foot seven, you know, whatever. And yet he made it work and became one of the best passers in the history of the NFL. Like it kind of is what it feels like in the Brunson scenario. Now it's like, no matter what defender they throw at him, no matter what coverage they throw at him, he could get a mismatch with like a rangy long defender on him. Like, like I'm pretty convinced, like, and maybe this is sacrilege as a Knicks fan, but I'm pretty convinced that like, if, uh, if, the, if the Knicks were playing the Knicks and you know, the Knicks, the, the clone Knicks decided to throw OG on and Obi on Jalen Brunson, which is like a death sentence for most players, as we saw in this game, like, I think Brunson can still figure out how to score on him at this point. It's just gotten to that point where the dribble package, the the hezies, the the pivots, the everything is just too much for any single defender in the NBA to handle. And now we're seeing it's oftentimes too much for any two defenders in the NBA to handle. It's just absolute insanity what this guy has been able to accomplish. And it was really cool seeing him kind of finally get some recognition for that, like in a national TV game here on the heels of, you know, putting up his fifth straight 35 plus game and what really would have been his third straight 40 plus game in this one. Yeah. Would have joined uh, Bernard King and Carmelo as the only Knicks to ever do that. But I, I do think like it, like maybe this is something I, I, I don't know how interested you are in discussing it further. Like we can get into more next segment, but I was watching this and couldn't help, but think like, man, I wish, I wish Julius Randall was healthy because you could, you can see that the Knicks like, again, like, caveat like who knows how motivated the Celtics were you could see in the fourth quarter like how powerful motivation is when, when a worse team is more motivated uh, which the Celtics clearly had out there and they all of a sudden were making up a 30-point deficit on the Knicks so with that caveat like 
you can see that the Knicks can compete with them. And the Celtics have some real weaknesses, like particularly the rebounding and um, uh, the weakness every team has not being able to stop Jalen Brunson. Um, and, and and just this feeling of like, all right, if the Knicks like had Julius, like could they actually go and beat this team that statistically is, is maybe like a top six or seven regular season team in NBA history. And like, I don't, I don't know if I'd be ruling that out right now. Like if the Knicks had a fully healthy Julius Randle, the flip side of that is like what Julius Randle's injury has opened up is like, I've said it a few times, but like four out basketball around Jalen Brunson and as extraordinary as Jalen Brunson is like, even, even when the ecosystem isn't ideal, this version of Brunson with three shooters and a center in Isaiah Hartenstein, who to your point, Alex, like when those doubles come, he can throw it to Hartenstein and Hartenstein can take one dribble and lob it up to OG Ananobi cutting from the corner for a dunk. And all of a sudden, like, like if Mitchell Robinson's in at center, you can double Brunson and not have to worry about that. When Hartenstein's in there, you can't do that. And like, they've built this ecosystem. Like it reminds me of like the Steve Nash sons. It's like a luxury sports car that only Jalen Brunson knows how to drive. And he's just perfect to drive it. Like there, there just isn't really answers for what he's doing with this lineup. And that might not be true with Randall in the game. Is this one more guy you can potentially sag off of? So it, it's just interesting to watch. I wonder how far it can go because he is a one man army at times, but like this version of him, like he should be all NBA. He should get MVP votes. Like it, it is extraordinary. Yeah. I'm with you, man. Like, and uh, you know, let's get into it in the next segment because he got some love from Stan Van Gundy in this one. We finally saw Jalen Brunson show up on an MVP ballot, which we've been, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to make our case for and plenty of people on Twitter and everything else have been trying to make their case for for a while. So uh, get into that, get into lessons learned from this game. What are things that could possibly actually translate to a series against the Celtics, which at this point looks like it would be in the Eastern Conference Finals if the Knicks were able to get there. So maybe, uh, you know, a little little cautionary tale of not counting our chickens too early, but you know, let's uh, you know, we, we could still talk about it regardless and then talk about some great role player games as well. Cause as good as Jalen Brunson is the rest of this team really uh, stepped up in a big way and made the Celtics uncomfortable in this game. So we'll talk about that in the next segment and, and beyond. You know, that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good. That's what I get with Stitch Fix. Easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that will work for you. I just give my stylist my size, budget, style, and budget preferences. I order boxes when I want and how I want, no subscription required, and they send five just-for-me pieces plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice. I keep what works, and I send back the rest. My stylist always sends just right pieces, and the fit is on point. It's like they have style ESP. I don't know how they do it, but... They just get me. Citrus makes it all so easy. I don't like to shop, and they save me the time and effort. Plus, I get outfits to make me look and feel good. If you don't love something, just send it back. Shipping, returns, and exchanges have always been free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. And today's show is also brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, and we're back. And... Gavin, I, I teased it a little bit at the end of the, the last segment, but this game and this commentary team, now granted, I, I think this is my favorite TNT commentary team, uh, and mostly because I love Stan Van Gundy so much uh, as a color commentator, but uh, this commentating team gave Brunson a lot of love, rightfully so, because the Knicks were just absolutely destroying, and he was, he was a one-man wrecking crew. I mean, he went full... Thanos with a loaded infinity gauntlet on these guys and the infinity gauntlet was just all of his various moves that he can bust out. Um, 
but got some love from Stan Van Gundy on a national stage. It, he put him at number four on his uh, MVP ballot. And Stan also spent most of the show hating on Jason Tatum, <laughs> which is great. Uh, made a comment early about, you know, he didn't used to be this way, but now he just cries all the time about every call. And it's really annoying. And I wish he wouldn't do it, you know, and basically it was like, I don't know why he decided this is his identity now, but like every shot he takes, he's complaining to the ref that he didn't get a foul call uh, and then leaves him off the MVP ballot, which I'm sure will make the, uh, you know, the Bill Simmons brigade uh, extra angry, you know, the Boston sports mafia that loves to try to influence all the, all the various award uh, things off the Bill Simmons uh, writing tree there. But yeah, man, I, it was great. I love seeing Brunson get that national recognition on that stage and uh hopefully this leads to look i i don't think he's got a reasonable case to actually take mvp just because like the case for Jokic is so mammoth uh especially after like that huge win uh just last night that basically like sealed the one seed for them or came very close to it like that's gonna linger in people's minds and like statistical profile wise he's insane he deserves it but I hope Brunson gets some votes, and I, I hope that the stupid NBA MVP ladder that has not listed Brunson the entire season gets proven wrong, and he gets like, I don't know, a couple third place votes, maybe some fourth place and fifth place votes, and you know finds his way into the third or fourth place conversation in the MVP conversation because he he definitely deserves it at this point. Yeah, look, I'm I, I I said it preseason top five MVP. Don't don't look at my other predictions, but I said that. Um, yeah, I, it's it, it's cool. It's it's still surreal. I'm still pinching myself. And like the the only other like basketball thing I want to talk about with him is that like the three pointer seems back and like not that it was ever really gone, but early season like we were doing full episodes just on the on the distance from which he was shooting and the volume from which he was shooting and it, like for whatever reason, like it seems to be going down again. He's taking a ton of them. You mentioned it before six for 11 tonight. Like that's just something I'm going to keep watching these last two games of the season, certainly into the first round. Like I, I I'm sure it won't be quite that on a nightly basis where he's making six threes just because exhaustion is, is probably going to affect his shot a little bit when he's playing 42, 43 minutes a game in the playoffs. But if he can be closer to that guy, than who he's been for the most part, post the Ananobi and Randall injuries. Um, that is that is just another weapon in his arsenal, another weapon in the Knicks arsenal. But Alex, I wanted to I wanted to go through some other elements of this game and, and just see how real we we both feel they are. Because the Knicks, like there's there's a path here, right? Like the first round series, the Knicks get the three seed and they get the Pacers, they get the Magic, they get the Cavs, like very, very winnable. Yeah, you get the Bucks in the second round and Giannis is hurt or not at a hundred percent. Or the Bucks lose in the first round because Giannis isn't hurt or at a hundred percent. Like there's a world where we get Nick Celtics. And like it's pretty clear, like, all right, they're they're going to have problems stopping Jalen Brunson. There are also going to be games where, like again, like Drew Holiday and Derek White are like the best perimeter duo of guards, like in recent NBA history. Like there are going to be games where if they don't stop Brunson, they slow him down or they make him a little less efficient or, or Jalen just has an off night, but it's interesting to see where the Knicks have some other answers. Like in this one, 17 second ch chance points, 12 offensive rebounds in the first half, like the combination of Hartenstein and Mitch was really, really effective. It's fun to like what they're doing right now, where they're both like Mitch is starting to get more minutes and like, it's just keeping both of them super fresh and I think beyond that, like the other advantage of not having Randall in there is like when he's near the paint or when he's shooting like six feet away from the basket, there's another big that can help block out Mitchell Robinson when the Knicks are spaced and it's like it's bogey, it's Steven Chenzo, it's Brunson, and it's Josh Hart who's been making his threes his last few games. All of a sudden, like Mitch is one on one with Al Horford or one on one with Kristaps Porzingis. And we saw tonight, like that is a pretty good matchup for the Knicks. Not to mention Hart and Ananobi crashing as well. Like that feels like an area the Knicks can really hurt the Celtics and make them pay for getting so much skill and shooting on the floor. Yeah, I'm with you. That seems like a real thing that they could take notes of. And, you know, that is something that in the previous meetings with the Celtics, they didn't really have. And, you know, like like you said, it's nothing is a knock on Randall, but this team can just play completely differently. And I'll, I'll go back to again. I just thought it was so it was so apropos uh my colleague at the strickland matthew miranda pointed out uh in their one of their most recent recaps that 
what Jalen Brunson is doing right now is very similar to like early 2000s Allen Iverson, but way more efficient and with a way better supporting cast, like and a different style of basketball, obviously. But just the idea of this singular star who you know is going to bring the ball down pretty much every time, and yet you could do nothing about it because he's just so skilled. Uh, who now, unlike what AI had back then, has a supremely talented supporting cast, uh, multiple like all defense potential contenders on his team. Uh, some of the best three point shooting, like in the league, Dante DiVincenzo is one of the best three point shooters in the league. OG Ananobi, at, at least from his favorite spots, is one of the most elite three point shooters in the league. Um, you know, it really opens up a, a new way of playing for them. Uh, I'll say if there was one thing that I would take away from this, it's that even without Julius Randle, the Knicks can still beat this Celtics team up. And this like goes back to a conversation I had all the way back last off season with John Corrales. We did a, a Knicks and Celtics crossover together. And he was like, it was after the Porzingis trade. And I think maybe predating the holiday trade. Um, but or maybe the holiday trade had happened. I don't know. But either way, he was like, this team kind of lost some of their identity. Like they had a pretty good core of guys that could like rebound the ball and play tough and whatever. And they now fully leaned into just like being this elite offensive team with like rim protection, but that's missing a rebounding presence. And that really showed through in this game. Like Josh Hart dominated in this game, like 16 rebounds. And I mean, he, he embarrassed Chris Stapps Porzingis on a number of them. And you know that if you want to like have a happy thought about a previous memory, you had to like bury about Porzingis back when, you know, he was on the Knicks. Like the big thing was always like, this guy is seven foot three. Like, how do you not play bigger? Like how, how are you getting boxed out by like Marcus smart? And that was that, you know, it was when it was Knicks Celtics and now it's, now it's Nick Celtics again, but he's a Celtic, and now he's getting boxed out by Josh Hart instead of Marcus Smart. Uh, still with an art on the end of the name, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the common thread. But oh, man, imagine when Fart tries to get a rebound on yeah, <laughs> Next up is Fart. <laughs> <laughs> Suck but, <it> KP. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it was it, that was the big thing that stood out to me in this one. I mean, just two nonsensical stats. Like the Knicks out rebounded the Celtics 52 to 36 like that's a huge margin mm -hmm. and then by the end of the game this number did not look quite as crazy that they outshot the celtics 99 shots to 86 but coming out of halftime they had they a, a 20, 20 shot advantage yeah. yeah 20 shot advantage that's insane and those extra opportunities that's not that's not going to change in the playoffs when things get more physical that's just going to become more pronounced which is why maybe Maybe betting against this historic regular season Celtics team is not the worst idea in the world, considering that they just don't have those guys that can do that physical postseason style of basketball. Yeah, I still I think there's stuff for Boston to go at that they maybe didn't do enough this game. Like, I don't like Josh Hart on Jalen Brown. And and to me, this is like if we're going to talk downsides of not having Julius Randle, obviously the offense and when like games slow down, his shot creation. But defensively, I think it's a real loss because I go back to that first game of the year against the Celtics where the Knicks just felt really small against them. And like even even like when Quentin Grimes was on the floor, like defending his heart out, like Jason Tatum would just turn around, and hit a shot over him. And with Ananobi, you have a solution at one spot. And the beauty of having Ananobi, Randall, like and Mitch is like you were all of a sudden like just big in a way that could really bother the Celtics wings. And you can pick one of them to bother at a time with Ananobi and, and, and deeply bother them because Ananobi is like, like you, if you outside of, I'm not even going to say Giannis because like, he's not that great of a man to man defender. Like Ananobi like is the best possible matchup for these guys. Maybe Kawhi, like Kawhi totally locked in would be the only guy who could bother them a little bit more. But at the other spot, like there is someone to go at Josh Harden. You saw that a couple times tonight in the first half. And then the other thing was like the Celtics just like shot disproportionately bad from three. But that's that's kind of the team Joe Missoula designed. And it's like like if the if Boston does have not a fatal flaw, but a potential flaw, it's that this team has such an overwhelming amount of talent. But because they just take so many threes, like they can still fall victim to bad shooting nights. And if, if that happens like four out of seven times, like all of a sudden you blink and they're out. So they're not unbeatable. It's a really tough matchup for the Knicks. It's still not one that I particularly think the Knicks can win. 
But tonight, it was a good reason to have some hope. And Alex, we've spent so much time on Brunson. I want to talk a little bit more about Hart. I want to talk a little bit more about Ananobi next on Locked on Knicks. But first, just a reminder, this show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. And it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So if you listened to our previous show, I recommended, and you know, maybe you feel a little more strongly about this now after the win that the Knicks just put on against the prohibitive title favorites uh, in the Celtics. The Knicks are at a tidy little plus 3,700 now. Uh, that was plus 3,900 when we recorded our previous show. So clearly there's some action going in favor of the Knicks right now. Uh, so maybe hop on that train now while you still can. Uh, if my math is correct. I think if you put a $10 bet on that, you would win 370 bucks if the Knicks end up winning a championship. So nothing like giving you a second reason to root for the Knicks to win a championship as if you need one. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, and we're back in to keep talking through this Knicks win again, 118 to 109, but it was hardly that was hardly the story of this game. This was not a nine point win. This was a 30 point win. Uh, the Knicks just very uh, untibs like pulled all of their well, I won't say all of their important players. I mean, they still have Steven Chenzo out there for a large part of the fourth well, quarter. It was really just Brunson and Hart, right? Everyone or, and, and, and Ananobi, Ananobi but, but yeah, Hartenstein, Devo. Precious Deuce and Bogey was the lineup. Yeah, that, they played so the entire we, fourth quarter. I, I gotta, I gotta get off one, one bar, Alex. Like uh, Joe Missoula took waving the white flag literally. It was Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, Svi Mikhailuk combining to make like nine threes. Like they were shooting Hoosiers two in there and just lighting the Knicks on fire in the fourth quarter. Like I was. I was a little scared there <laughs> somehow could have lose the game. The Celtics got it as close as seven in the final minute, but that was like one of the craziest garbage time runs I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it was enough to maybe put a little pressure on. If it was if it was Doc Rivers coaching when they made that one three late, he probably would have pulled those players and put in an <laughs> even more meek lineup. Uh, if the <laughs> if the Bucks game the other day was any indication, yeah. he would have been like, <laughs> "You guys are main out. red claws. Get over here. We need yeah. you. We need you guys. Uh, you know, we need to be worse. How dare we almost come back and win this game that we were down a bunch? I got. Uh, I, I doubt. Uh, I don't think TD Garden's ever been louder. They were like, "Hey, they're they're just like us, and and they're beating the Knicks. This is amazing." <laughs> yeah, I mean, they. Yeah, that last Pritchard. I think it was Pritchard at the last three, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. they erupted, man. I was like, <laughs> "What do you guys think is happening here?" There's a minute twenty left, and they're it still was, down by like <laughs> nine. Like it was, it was like scary, but also one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, well, you know, they needed a win tonight. You know, they couldn't get a win through the first three quarters, so at least, at least their, uh, you know, their backup uh, squad gave them a little something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, OG Ananobi, Josh Hart. Uh, DiVincenzo to a degree, Bojan Bogdanovich, I think all had uh, some pretty good, uh, contributions here. I'm going to just quickly do Ananobi first. And, you yeah. know, if you want to add some notes, of course, feel free, but like a, a almost team high just behind Jalen Brunson, uh, plus 20 in this game in 26 minutes, shoots five of 10, two or three from three. Like we want to talk about guys whose three pointers back his three pointers back, which is great. That's amazing news for the Knicks. Uh, but just his disruptiveness, like only ended up with one steal and one block on the stat sheet. But I thought that his impact went so much further than that. It was obviously the most flashy play of it was a really nice, uh, a really nice poke away steal for a transition dunk at one point. A uh, nice little tidy two hander on the other end. Didn't try to do anything fancy. Very OG on an Obi esque. Uh, but it just in general, I thought that the way that he played really bothered whichever star that the Knicks decide to put him on. And, you know, if we want to kind of continue the theme of the last segment of things that could translate to the playoffs, like this goes for any team in the NBA, like OG Ananobi's back. He looks healthy. 
knock on wood, you know what I mean? No, no uh, elbow issues seem to be popping back up again since he's come back from that tennis elbow. And if he's healthy in the playoffs, whatever team the Knicks are facing can basically bank on having a less effective version of their star player for the entire series, as long as the Knicks are able to shadow on an OB on them. And that is so huge and really showed through in this game where when the Celtics did try to like be like, wait, we want to try now. It was like Jalen Brunson scoring on them and Ananobi disrupting, you know, Tatum or Brown or whoever he was on. And then that creating the chaos that eventually led to the Knicks playing the passing lanes well, an errant pass getting picked off, another transition bucket or whatever, you know, it led to. And then just a, a, a runaway Knicks win in this game. So he and Brunson are nasty, nasty combo. And, and it really showed through in this game. Yeah, it's 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 amazing having both of them. Um, like he just he gets one of those pokeaways for a dunk seemingly every single game. Like it's 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 a it's like that is a is a rare NBA play. Like if you get one of those as a team, a game that's amazing. And he and he's just you can just bank it in that he's going to do that once a game. Like it's 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 awesome. Um, I wanted to talk uh Bogdanovich a little bit because I thought like it's it's really fun to see him on the court at the same time as Brunson and them cooking the same time, because it gives you a little bit of that Brunson Randall effect, but it's, it's a little bit smoother in that they can, I, I don't want to say it's smoother because like, obviously Brunson and Randall, like have their own chemistry and like are probably better at like helping each other. I'm just going to say in a vacuum, like it's fun to watch. And that's again, like this is, this is Bogdanovich praise, but really it's Ananobi praise because Ananobi is the one who allows Tom Thibodeau to be comfortable, like playing those two, like one below average defender in Brunson and one borderline disastrous defender in Bogdanovich together. Um, but he had like three sick plays in a row. Um, the Brunson, like Brunson pushing up the floor to Hart to Bogey. And like for better or worse, like Bogey is is totally fearless. And he just went right at KP. And it's one of those plays you're watching, you're like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh yeah. Like the up and under was crazy. Like he didn't really have an angle on it. And you see the replay and KP's like eight foot long right arm is is somehow an inch away from the basketball, but didn't quite get there. I, I don't know how he got that up. That was crazy. And then like another one where he rejected the screen Jalen Brown, I, I think, didn't realize that this dude had the moxie to go at him without a screen. And he kind of got crossed up and then was like, again, didn't want to be embarrassed, like sped in to beat him. And Bogey beat him with the inside hand. Like, again, like for a balding, like Croatian dude in his in his 30s, um, like he he just has like some real sauce to his game. Like jab step three in Derek White's face, like a little later on in the second quarter. Like it was it was just a really fun run of basketball from Bogdanovich. And I know like, it's not there every night. Now it's, it's four of the last six games that he's played really well, but when he's on like this team, I think it's a different level. And I I'm surprised at myself for saying this, because there was a point where I'm like, all right, he's just like probably not going to play in the playoffs. Like he is somewhat of a metronome, I think for how the Knicks are going to do in the playoffs. They really, really need that one extra score, especially as OG continues to get acclimated. Bogey's hot. Like, I, I think this Knicks team can compete with the Celtics on any given night. Yeah, there's a part of me that, like, conspiracy theory hat on almost wonders if the Knicks are, like, keeping it, like, if Tibbs is sort of keeping him under wraps as, like, a secret weapon or something. Um, and he's, you know, obviously ramping him up a little bit right now. But, you know, the, the scoring talent is just so undeniable with Bowie on. Like, you watch him play and there's – there's a certain Brunson-esque quality to how he scores the ball where, you know, he just does it all through through the finesse of it all, like just footwork and knowing his spots and knowing exactly how to attack the defense like a surgeon, you know, and and making it work. And he is starting to get some, some chemistry with Brunson, essentially in the sense of he gives Brunson that luxury like what Julius did where there could be possessions where Brunson doesn't have to be the focal point. Uh, and, you know, a few of those here and there, during the playoffs will be very valuable because it's like it, he needs to find times to rest in the game, you know, and, and those are the times right there, you know, and, and that's going to keep him fresh throughout the playoffs and hopefully injury free and fatigue free and everything else. And, 
you know, that that'll be a very valuable thing to have in the playoffs if they can, you know, get that out of Bogdanovich. Uh, I want to highlight Hartenstein next, who leaving aside all the other great things that he did, uh, which was, you know, another double double, 11 points, 13 boards, seven of those offensive, which went a long way towards that uh, huge advantage for the Knicks in the rebounding category. But the six assists stood out to me, leads the team in assists in this game. Uh, it seems to me like ever since that Kings game, he's maybe he has his own grudge against Sabonis now. Uh, it seemed like in that game, he was really trying to show out and be like, I'm a really good passing big. Like, screw you, man. I'm better than you. <laughs> and ever since then, it's just been like, that's been such a focus for him, I feel like. And we really got to see a lot of razzle dazzle in this one. I mean, some of it was in garbage time. I think he had three assists in the fourth quarter, which take from that what you will. But one of those was an absolutely beautiful no look dime to to deuce on a cut uh which like they were both kind of just like up at the top of the key and like he just got the ball handed to him and then hartenstein just looks and deuce just like bolted straight inside because there was no defender because hartenstein was out there drawing the defender uh from the post and then just kicks it to to deuce on this like gorgeous little skip pass that was cool um but kind of got the offense going early like had a really nice head up assist to divincenzo to to get the Knicks their first points and then had another really nice one to DiVincenzo um, in the third quarter as well for uh, off a cut where it was just like a really nice like wraparound pass that it really popped when you watch it a second time. And um, yeah, his passing just continues to be great. You know, again, you want to talk about things that make Brunson's and everybody's life easier. It really helps when you have a center that can spread the ball like that. And as long as you have guys that like to cut, which the Knicks do and Hart and uh, DiVincenzo and on and Obi, then you know you're going to get some very easy points that way. Yeah, he was he was amazing. Um, I I, I wanted to go deeper on Josh Hart. We're, we're pretty much out of time, so I'm not going to do it. All I'm going to say is like I, I I was questioning the dude's contract earlier this year. He's he's worth every freaking penny and more. Like he he is a bargain. He's incredible. Like to your point, like going at someone who's basically a foot taller than him in, in Porzingis and like just consistently getting rebounds over him. Like what he did in transition. Like if like him. We, we always say it, but like if he can keep shooting threes like that, that is the difference for the Knicks in the playoffs. Like you don't have Julius Randle. You don't have a second guy who can consistently create shots and cramp quarters like Hart just has to take and make threes. And if he's if he's doing that, the Knicks, again, have a pretty good chance any given day against anyone. Uh, what a win for New York. All the injuries, all the strife well on track for a top three seed. Nets tomorrow, um, Bulls on Sunday. I'm not, I don't think we're going to do one tomorrow. So we'll probably talk to you um, when we know the Knicks playoff position, which is, is a pretty cool thing. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited for it. Anyways, he's Alex. I'm Gavin. We will catch up with you very, very soon on Locked on Knicks. Go Knicks.